Hi, my name is Richard Savell. I'm the Director of Surgical Critical Care here at Maimonides Medical Center. This is our educational video focused in for our trainees to understand the fundamental concepts of oxygen delivery and oxygen uptake, as well as oxygen extraction ratio and other important oxygen delivery transport equations. Let's focus our attention here to the slide where we talk about some important equations that we're going to be dealing with, including the equations for arterial oxygen content, mixed venous oxygen content, oxygen consumption, cardiac output, oxygen delivery, and oxygen extraction ratio. I would begin by saying that I was introduced to these equations when I was a critical care fellow and we would have to spend a couple of months in the operating room with the anesthesia residents and when I first began one of the residents asked me how low we could turn the flows down on the oxygen component of the anesthesia machine. I wasn't sure the answer to this question because as an internal medicine based critical care physician this wasn't something we routinely did this wasn't relating to tidal volumes or FiO2 or PEEP and so I wanted to show you how you can fundamentally derive the answer to that important question of how low you can safely turn the flows down on the oxygen component of the anesthesia machine. So again, if you look at the slide, you'll see that the first equation is that for arterial oxygen content. And as you can see here, there's two components, the oxygen bound to hemoglobin and the oxygen dissolved in the blood. The oxygen bound to hemoglobin represented by the, this component of the equation, 1.36 times the hemoglobin times the oxygen saturation, and this component, 0.003 times the PaO2. And the normal value, as you can see here, is 20 milliliters of oxygen per 100 milliliters of blood. It's important to recognize that the overwhelming majority of the oxygen is bound to hemoglobin and as was discussed when I was a fellow, if you had to pick what's more important, the oxygen saturation or the PO2, clearly the oxygen saturation is of greater importance. The next equation that we'll be discussing is that of mixed venous oxygen content. And again, it's the same equation, but where the sample is drawn is from the pulmonary artery. After the blood has gone out through the body, that the oxygen has been extracted from the blood, that the blood has come back to the right heart from the superior and inferior vena cava mixed in the right ventricle and is heading back towards the lungs through the pulmonary artery. The normal value here, as you can see, is 15 milliliters of oxygen per 100 milliliters of blood. So far, so good. The next equation that we have to discuss is called the AVDO2, the difference between the arterial oxygen content and the mixed venous oxygen content. And this is important as we start to try and understand to create the equation for oxygen consumption. So as I mentioned before, this is the difference between the arterial oxygen content and the mixed venous oxygen content and helps us to understand how much oxygen is used by the body per unit volume of blood with a normal value of five milliliters of oxygen per 100 milliliters of blood. Our next step is to actually create and derive and understand the equation for oxygen consumption. If you look at the slide here, you can see that V.O2, oxygen consumption, can be described as the product of the AVDO2 times the cardiac output. And in words, the idea here is that if you know how much oxygen is being consumed by the body per unit of blood, and you know how much blood is moving around the body per unit time, if you multiply those together, you understand how much oxygen is being consumed per unit time. And again, this is the answer to the question that was asked of me when I was a fellow, and the answer is that the normal oxygen consumption for a normal person at, room, uh, at, at normal temperature and at normal bariatric pressure is 250 milliliters of oxygen per minute. And that's how low they can turn the flows down on the oxygen component of the anesthesia machine. But there's more excitement here. 
And again, the question is, if you rearrange this equation that we just came up with, you can solve it for cardiac output. Let's direct our attention again towards the slide. And you can see that the equation we had before, that the AVDO2 times the cardiac output is oxygen consumption. If you solve for cardiac output, you can see that cardiac output equals oxygen consumption divided by the AVDO2. And that's an important equation. That equation has a name. That is the Fick equation. And we've derived it from first principles. And one of the reasons that it's important is that there are certain situations in which the thermodilution derived cardiac output may not be accurate, such as in patients that have uh, valvular abnormalities like tricuspid regurgitation. And so, for example, in the cardiac catheterization laboratory, they will calculate both forms of the cardiac output and see if there are any significant discrepancies. Another important point that I want to bring up is that the AVDO2 can differ in different shock states. It can help you figure out what the preponderance of the pathophysiology is in the patient you're caring for if you're able to get these values. And again, it's an important point that our ability to measure this has been decreased because the data supports the lack of use of the pulmonary artery catheter, but it doesn't obviate the need or the excitement to share this fundamental physiology and pathophysiology with you. So if you look on the slide, you can see that in cardiogenic shock, the AVDO2 increases, and in septic shock, it decreases. And the idea here, to take a, a few moments thinking about it, is that in cardiogenic shock, the problem is oxygen delivery, the problem is pump dysfunction, and therefore the body will extract more oxygen per unit volume of blood decreasing the oxygen saturation as it comes back to the heart and increasing that AVDO2. In a similar fashion in septic shock, the body's one of the numerous derangements that can be seen is what's called cytopathic hypoxia. And that is describing that in septic shock, even if you may be able to deliver oxygen appropriately, the ability of the body to extract oxygen is not normal and therefore the difference between the arterial and mixed venous oxygen saturation decreases. I'd like to spend the last few moments talking about oxygen delivery. And again, if you look at the slide, you can see that the equation for oxygen delivery is arterial oxygen content times the cardiac output. And that leads to D dot O2. And the normal value here is approximately 1,000 milliliters of oxygen per minute. And there's a couple important points here. One is to note how much more oxygen is delivered to the body normally than what is required to maintain normal homeostasis. And you can also get a sense of how much derangement there must be for our patients, either in issues of oxygen delivery, in cardiogenic dysfunction, or ability to oxygenate the blood properly at all in patients with ARDS and other forms of acute lung injury. And you can see just how much reserve the body has. This leads us to a discussion of what's called the oxygen extraction ratio. And as you can see here on the slide, VO2 divided by DO2. Of all of the oxygen that is delivered, how much is consumed? And the normal value for that is between 25 and 30 percent. This value goes up in issues like cardiogenic shock. So to summarize some of the important, exciting points in this video, if you turn to the slide, you'll see that Equations for arterial and mixed venous oxygen content were described and discussed. We use those to discuss the equation for AVDO2, the difference between arterial and mixed venous oxygen content. We derived the equation for oxygen consumption, and we showed fundamentally how much oxygen a human being uses every minute and how we came up with that. We then rearranged that equation and came up and solved for cardiac output and described the Fick equation, a very important equation indeed. We talked about how the AVDO2 can differ in different shock states, and this can help you better understand the fundamental pathophysiology of your critically ill patient. And then we concluded by talking a little bit about the equation for oxygen delivery and the oxygen extraction ratio.
We hope you found that to be helpful. Sometimes these equations can be a little intimidating. And again, as I mentioned before, because there has been a sea change in critical care in terms of how often the pulmonary artery catheter is used, we don't get this kind of data as frequently as we used to. But there are certain situations in which you will, and regardless, the validity of these equations has not changed. Thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to watch this video, and we hope you found it to be educational.